Say hello to the blue, to the blue guy. Hi, Scott. <laughs> blue Meanie here, coming to you from the world-famous Monster Factory in beautiful downtown Paulsboro, New Jersey. Uh, asking a great question for the great folks at Kayfabe Commentaries. Uh, everybody knows the NWO was the biggest thing in the wrestling world. And of course, in ECW, me, Stevie, and Nova, we were the parody guys. We did the Blue World Order. Uh, we already know Eric Bischoff wasn't too uh, savvy or too uh, happy with our parody of the Blue World Order. But my question being, uh, what do you guys in the Blue World Order, well, in the New World Order, see? <laughs> in the New World Order, what did you think of the, uh, the BWO? Uh, what, did you guys do any uh, internal ribbing as to who played who or something like that? But, uh, you know, before you answer the question, I wanted to say thank you for the opportunity to... Uh, uh, take this question and uh, thank you for a great par a great gimmick from us to parody. So uh, thank you and uh, see you later. Brian, you look like the gray meanie. You got to get the the shit. You're out of spray. Um, I I thought it was really cool. Uh, to me, uh, like just like what these guys, these young bucks and stuff, or the Bullet Club are doing in Japan now. I look at it like as, as a tribute, and I think it's all coming from a good place. But I will say, when when Stevie Richards first came into WCW, and he was part of that whole Raven deal and mm -hmm. stuff, the flock, and I went up to Stevie, you know, before TV, and I walked up, and he came over, and Stevie works for Dallas now, so I see him regularly. And uh, I went up to him and said, oh. He goes, I'm Mr. Hyde, you do MC Richards? I said, yeah. I said, you, you big Stevie cool, huh? He goes, yeah, yeah. And I said, has, has my partner seen you? And he went, no. I said, he's looking for you. And I walked away. Stevie left TV, brother. He left TV. I mean, he's a contracted guy. He left. Wow. A month or so goes by. Now, I liked his work. And now on TVs, I always wrestled. I'd go out, I'd do a survey, and I wrestled because I can, I'm good at it. And Bischoff knew I liked being in the ring. Like, Kev often would stand on the outside, you know, whatever. He mm -hmm. didn't like being in the ring as much. I love it. It was like therapeutic for me. The only time I felt in control of my life was in the ring. And so one time, you know, at that point at TVs, I could pretty much ask for whoever I wanted. If I'm just going to have a match, I said, well, let me have Stevie Richards. It doesn't matter what the finish is. You know, I'll give you an entertaining segment, then we'll do whatever you want to happen. You know, they can hit, beat, NWO can hit, I can just beat him, he can beat me, whatever. I don't care about that. I just care about having a fun segment. Mm -hmm. So I asked for him, he heard about it, he left the building again. Now, just fast forward, that was 20 years ago. Fast forward to like a couple weeks ago, I mentioned it to him in Atlanta at Dallas's yoga studio and go, hey, bro, remember that? And he, and he stills a little bit like, yeah, you know, <laughs> like I was doing a yoga workout with him the other day, DDP yoga. I'm in the studio doing a workout with him, and on the, they have a big monitor that we're checking everybody's heart rate. And I'm looking at Stevie going, wow, brother, you're really fit, man. Your heart rate hasn't even moved during this whole hour-long workout. And he goes, yeah, it sure went up that time, though, you asked for me at the match. Like, still, like, real kind of nervous about it. I'm going, like, whoa, bro, like, like, like uncle. I mean, everybody is who they are. He's a little bit weird. I'm a little bit weird. You're probably a little bit weird. You know, it's just in 20 years he never figured out. Bro, no one told him. You want to hear another? You want to hear another flashback story? I just ran into Bubba Ray Dudley. Mm -hmm. I, me and Kev at that show in Romeoville, mm -hmm. Illinois, I was talking about where Mongo's bar and restaurant was. They were at that show. Said hi to them, Kev. Then they popped up. You know, they were in. Uh, they're back to work for Vents now. So then I saw him at. At SummerSlam and stuff like that. I just saw them last week in Houston. But the first time I met them was uh, NWO comes into WWE 2000 or whatever. And they fly me to LA just to have a scan done so they can make a doll of me. Mm -hmm. So I'm there, and this is the first time I've ever met them. So I go, hey, how you doing? Hey, you know, and then the guys are there being real polite. Hey, how you doing? And I said, oh, you got Dudley Boys. Man, I love your finish. They go, oh, thanks, thanks. And I said, yeah, I can't wait to kick out of it. And they went, brother, now. Five years go by, I'm in TNA, he's in TNA. And he comes up to me, hey, remember that time you said that about kicking out my fan? And, and now, just I just have a text, I still have it on my phone, from um, Albert, as runs the NXT Performance Center. And they invited me to come down, and we're just scheduling time. We actually, I'm going down in the middle of October for about a week to work with the young guys. And he, in his text, goes, I said, hey, look forward to seeing, seeing you, big man. He goes, yeah, me too. Can't wait to kick out the Razor's Edge. Now, he said it like that. Then he went on to text. 
Yeah, I remember the first time I ever met you. You said that to Bubba Ray, and I said, bro, he just brought that up again in Houston. Like, it's still in his head. Yeah, you never kicked out, man. Like, you know, like it, it's, it's, to me, it's so funny because it's like, gotcha. Like, oh, just gotcha, Bubba. I got a Bubba online. It's because you play it so straight, so they buy it. I just. That's great. I don't know. I just, I like stern shit. I like stern shit. To the blue. the blue guy. Hi, Scott. <laughs> blue Meanie here, coming to you from the world-famous Monster Factory in beautiful downtown Paulsboro, New Jersey. Uh, asking a great question for the great folks at Kayfabe Commentaries. Uh, everybody knows the NWO was the biggest thing in the wrestling world. And of course, in ECW, me, Stevie, and Nova, we were the parody guys. We did the Blue World Order. Uh, we already know Eric Bischoff wasn't too... Uh, savvy or too uh, happy with our parody of the Blue World Order. But my question being, uh, what do you guys in the Blue World Order, well, in the New World Order, see? <laughs> in the New World Order, what did you think of the, uh, the BWO? Uh, what, did you guys do any uh, internal ribbing as to who played who or something like that? But, uh, you know, before you answer the question, I wanted to say thank you for the opportunity to uh, uh, take this question and uh, thank you for a great pay a great gimmick from us to parody so uh thank you and uh see you later brian you look like the gray meanie you got to get the the shit you're out of spray um i i thought it was really cool I, to me like, like just like what these guys these young bucks and stuff or the bullet club are doing in japan now i look at it like as, as a tribute and i think it's all coming from a good place but i will say when when stevie richards first came into wcw and he was part of that whole Raven deal and mm -hmm. stuff, the flock. And I went up to Stevie, you know, before TV, and I walked up, and he came over. And Stevie works for Dallas now, so I see him regularly. And uh, I went up to him and said, oh. He goes, I'm Mr. Hyde, you do MC I said, yeah. I said, you, you big Stevie cool, huh? He goes, yeah, yeah. And I said, has my partner seen you? And he went, no. I said, he's looking for you. And I walked away. Stevie left TV, brother. He left TV. I mean, he's a control.